One of the cool things about the Greenskins is their roster diversity, and the Savage Orcs being a big part of that are certainly an excellent element of it. They've got uh, no armor, obviously, just relying on their physical resistance. 25% though is quite decent. Uh, this replay from Sage here, he's got Wurzag leading the way, a couple Savage Orc Boar Boy Biggins, who are the sort of elite tier Greenskins cavalry. Frenzy gives them extra charge, weapon strength, anti-large of only 5, but still it's something. Pretty low defensive stats overall, but again, that 25% physical resistance. Uh, of course, Wurzag with the uh, lore of the big wah here is looking for just Gaze of Mork and Fists of Gork. Interesting. So the cheap spells, trying to spam those, get as many procs the Bonewood Staff. Not as good as it was before, but still decent. Mangy Marauders for some AP missiles. We've also got the Rogue Idol, the Biggin, and uh, Goblin Rock Lobber as well. This is to try and pull Cathay out of position. It is up against Cathay, which is definitely a tough opponent. Anytime we've got some goblins as the vanguard here up front, and that's pretty much it uh, for Cathay. Zhao is an absolute terror in this matchup because he's incredibly tanky, has a great spell selection, can cause terror. It's just a force, absolutely, with some crane guns to mow down infantry. And uh, Celestial Dragon Crossbows, interesting choice in the center for some elite AP missiles. Lots of peasant long spears and jig warriors to protect all that with... Uh, Righteous Lances of Weijin acting as the sweeper, sort of safety position here. See, already Greenskin's teeing off, and yeah, Sage here is going to push forward. I honestly think he should maybe kite back a little bit and like actually spread some of his units out, um, just to try and pull Cathay out of position here as much, like charging in and then like pretending like you're going to engage, right? Like get a few attack orders going and then pull the entire force back. Trying to defeat those isolated units, but he is going to give us some engagements here. Goblin's definitely going to get the south end of that as they get uh, crushed by missiles here. Righteous Lance is also on a nice charge there on the Savage Orcs. Righteous Lances don't have magic attacks. Their AP will be completely wasted there, so not going to be a super efficient engagement for them, but they'll do some damage and then pull back. Zhao also with a nice terror out on the Goblins in the front line, so initial attack from the Greenskins relatively ineffective, kind of just distracting. Again, pulling some of the uh, ultimately, same result, right? Pulling some of the Cathay units out of position. You could have accomplished that without uh, necessarily losing as many goblins as you did. Not that they're a huge resource to lose, but if you add up the three of them, it's about 900 gold, which is not an insignificant amount, and they could definitely come in handy in later parts of the battle if they're still alive. But excellent pin here, Righteous Lances of Wei Jin kind of baited into the Rock Lobbers. We see a FG to get and a counter charge from the Savage Orc. Boar boy biggins. Righteous Lance is going to be absolutely smashed here by the dual wielding Savage Orc Boar Boys. We have to be one of the goofiest cavalry units in the game, but absolutely awesome <laughs> as well. The uh, Rogue Idol continuing to throw his rocks here, get some long range damage, and Cathay now getting into a dangerous position where they're pulled pretty far out of position. That said, we had a Savage Orc kind of overrun pretty severely here. Gets routed on leadership, takes a little bit of friendly fire damage there, and Cathay having these crane guns in a secure position, all three still, is a huge problem. Can green skins. Generally, um, in this matchup, sort of from a build perspective, I would probably want to take a 20 stack if possible. Like, I would try, and obviously the Savage Orc theme here is really cool, um, but I would probably try and rework some of these units at least to maybe take some light cavalry, especially uh, to try and, like, circum navigate, try and bypass, because there's a lot of infantry here, right? Like, a couple of Goblin Wolf Riders would do absolute dividends. They, like, 3x their cost, right, against these crane guns. So, um, yeah, some cheap light cavalry, absolutely essential in this matchup, given Cathay's relative weakness to it. But, uh, yeah, we see Mangy Marauders rallying, Hammer of Gork gets back online. Oh, is that the actual Hammer of Gork there? Plus the regular Goblin Rock Lobbers, so quite a bit of range damage going to be uh, falling in for the Greenskins, which will definitely kind of equalize this over time. Let's see what the Crane Guns prioritize targeting-wise. It looks like right now they're going after those Savage Orc. Boy Biggins haven't really focused the Rogue Idol too much yet, but obviously going to be a huge threat to it. But, uh, yeah, the Crane Guns in my mind and Zhao were kind of the two biggest threats of this army. The infantry, I guess the Celestial Dragon Crossbows are also a pretty decent threat as well, if you could run them down. But these Savage Orc Boy Biggins trying to rally, get back to a relatively safe position, are going to get caught out by Zhao here and uh, shot up by the Crossbows. Nope, Crossbows turn to shoot. Mangy Marauders, which is definitely a good choice even though they're not 
Uh, the same value-wise, obviously much cheaper. Tactically, they're going to be super important here. Again, could run down some of these crane guns, perhaps, in melee. Regiment of Renown stats gives them some some ability in melee. Not not as good as something like, uh, you know, true hybrid cavalry, but still. The trolls also, yeah, the trolls are a rough one here. Non-stone trolls without their missile resistance are generally a tough play here. I don't know. I, like, I kind of like it on one hand, but at the same time, their leadership is just so poor. I, again, would like to have seen a little bit of light cavalry in that slot instead, but we'll see. Right now, Greenskins have been able to equalize things by throwing rocks <laughs> with rock lobbers and the rogue idol is pounding away at a distance. Ooh, actually able to take out one crane gun with some counter battery fire there. And we've also got that savage orc in tactical reserve way out in the distance. They could probably kind of swing in behind and try and chase those routing crane guns if possible. But uh, yeah, next crane gun, definitely a priority target. Let's see if the Rock Lobbers and other units can keep landing consistent shots. The Hammer of Gork, you know, Regiment Renown status, giving the extra accuracy and refire rate definitely helps. Warzag, likewise, with this little, uh, yeah, wow, a Gaze of Mork. I I'd see that so rarely, to be honest. But it is a nice cheap Winds of Magic spell to get that uh, melee attack charge buff. Uh, let's see here. I've got quite a few Cathay units rallying to the cause. I don't know. It might have been a little bit of desync, but perhaps not. I do see the crane guns there now shooting the Savage Orcs. I've been forgotten, which is a little bit rough, but let's see if the Savage Orcs can uh, turn around, return to the battle. Angie Marauders also here, just about out of ammunition, so they'd be an excellent choice for chasing any routing units, but uh, the Halberds are definitely a tough unit. Jade Halberd's just so cost-effective. One of the main reasons Cafe is so strong in land battles is their infantry is just so cost-effective, and the Savage Orc Warboy Biggins are going to struggle here without getting, like, good rear side charges and so forth. Warzag himself, some decent AP damage. He charges in with some of the Savage Orc Warboys. They're going to try and take out those Celestial Dragon Crossbows. And it might actually be able to. Warzag himself is whacking a few of them down. And the Rogue Idol now being shot up a little bit. Also out of ammunition is going to be deployed in melee against some of these infantry. But mm, Jow falls in to attack the Hammer of Gork. Pretty much out of ammunition anyway. Looks like he's going to get uh, maybe Effigy to get here. And a counter charge if there's one left. Let's see. I don't know what's going on with this uh, frame stuttering. I apologize about that. It seems to be pretty consistent on this map, but... Get FG to get. He does have one charge up here, so that would have been a great opportunity, honestly, to get the Rogue Idol in there. 780 weapon strength, just FG to get real quick, counter charge in with the Rogue Idol. I don't know, he might have been a little bit interrupted by the catapults. Possibly he wouldn't have been able to actually get in base contact. But uh, unfortunately, Wurzag ducks in the other direction, kind of focuses elsewhere. Leaving the Rogue Idol somewhat here by itself, just with the Hammer of Gork and getting some mad frame stuttering now in this later part of the battle. No idea what's causing that, but... <laughs> Greenskins on the balance of power at least looking pretty good as they've managed to route a lot of these units. A lot of units running out of ammunition. Rogue Idol also still so much uh, HP left. But uh, those Jade Halberds are definitely going to be scary. And of course Warzag relatively vulnerable of a combatant. But yeah, you can see the Rogue Idol now closing with Warzag. He needs to cut and run in this direction. Yep, straight towards the Rogue Idol. Exactly what he's going to do there. We see some units also out scattered in the periphery. But obviously both players focused in on this heroic fight, as if Warzag falls here, that's going to be game for the green skins, absolutely. Likewise, if uh, Warzag can stick close to the idol, fight together. Ooh, FG to get right now. There we go. And the rogue idol gets his attack animation going. It's unfortunately painfully slow. It's going to get a fist of Gork. Let's just maximize his hit chance. Gets a hit there. A little bit buggy. I think it did actually land the hit, but unfortunately it took so long that Zhao himself actually charged back up in the air. So, yeah, a little bit of a rough timing there on the mechanics, but still, Fist of Gork should help the Rogue Idol's melee defense as he faces off against this blob of, blob of infantry. Sage probably wishing he had a little foot of Gork right now to just blow up this blob of infantry and significantly equalize things. Because right now it's a lot of anti-large, pretty much all anti-large infantry against the uh, the big in here. And as much uh, HP as he has, still, you know, about 4,000. You can see how rapidly it's dropping, though, from the hits there. The Celestial Dragon Crossbow and also still hanging around. Warzak desperately trying to hang on. 
Uh, managed just to actually not get hit by Zhao. Zhao having a little bit of buggy pathing of his own. Let's see here. There was a couple opportunities, I think, where Sage, like, even right there, you know, casting Foot of Gork on, or uh, Fist of Gork, rather, on the big end. Like, I understand. There's also an argument to be made. You cast Foot of Gork on Warzag himself and actually have him just stand and fight there for just a couple more seconds so that the Rogue Idol can actually make contact and they can fight 2v1. Um, I mean, obviously, Zhao's still going to try and pull away, and it's possible he still does, but Warzag at least gives you a better chance of keeping him pinned on the ground. But as these two savage single entities for the green skins make their final stand, uh, the Rogue Idol is able to actually just about route off everything that's left. He's got about 1,700 HP. Whereas I also make a making a valiant stand himself. Uh, Fists of Gork, melee attack and defense. He's actually doing a really good job against Xiao, all things considered. Getting really lucky on those defense rolls. But there we go. There's a big hit as what we would expect. All of a sudden, the Rogue Idol's leadership starts to falter as it suffers from crumbling. Of course, it is, after all, just a construct. Now, even though it's pretty much functionally unbreakable, I mean, it got below 1,000 HP before it suffered any effects from crumbling, so still pretty much unbreakable. But, uh, yeah, Zhao actually getting a few attack rolls there as the sort of dice equalize somewhat. That's going to be game for the Greenskins, so yeah, really close battle, to be honest. Very back and forth, and both players had some good players, good plays, made a couple of mistakes, but ultimately, uh, Sage there, I think, again, from my perspective, just a couple of very small errors, it perhaps could have changed things there in the late game, because, I mean, to be honest, if if Warzag and um, the big and just crush Zhao right there in that very late game engagement, I mean, he's done the rest of the... Grand Cathay Force just absolutely tear routes, right? Um, yeah, there were a few other things I called out throughout the course of the battle, but overall, Sage did a great job executing a very thematic build against a pretty uh, mean Cathay build. I mean, this is maybe not totally meta. I don't know 100% what the meta would be in this matchup. Probably Tang. I don't know. Maybe not, actually, but uh, overall pretty mean. I mean, triple <laughs> rain guns with that spread defense. Yeah, definitely good, but somewhat vulnerable to, to light cavalry, which is why... You know, this this build, it ended up being sort of a good matchup, right? You have this big, heavy-hitting uh, Savage build, which, very mixed bag, with like 420 dank kills for the uh, big in here, but not that much actual value, which is super interesting to me. I guess just pounding a lot of cheap units. Uh, value on these board boy big ins, though, they're able to sweep some kills there. Uh, the catapults as well. Obviously, the regiment renown does a great job. The other one kind of used as bait, but still manages to get some value back despite that. The savage orcs themselves, the infantry. I have to say, I'm quite impressed. One of them doesn't quite pay for themselves, but the other two, I mean, 102, 143 kills. Very solid performance, especially considering they're kind of outmatched on numbers often. But still, uh, overall, very solid performance. I think I need to give them another look in this matchup, just because they absolutely, it seems like, mow down the Peasant long spears and actually trade okay against Jade Warriors if you can pull them out of position. But uh, yeah, the Goblins being sacked in the beginning, again, it seems like a small thing, but even if there were some Tattered Goblins sort of hanging around then that late pocket, you know, they can do some things. They can maybe block or try and flank around, chase a routing unit. I don't know. That probably wouldn't make that much of a difference. But there's, you know, those, in a close game, those small things, right? That's the difference between victory and defeat. But a very fun game, nonetheless, for Cafe's side. I mean, Zhao, obviously, is going to carry a lot of value, as will all of the AP missiles. Actually, not necessarily. One crane gun, two crane guns actually not paying back. So, decent job by Sage overall, shutting them down. Uh, despite everything, of course, a lot of the anti-large infantry in the late game is going to get some nice value, and just overall had some decent value, large stuff to fight, but uh, yeah, overall the value is just kind of spread around, to be honest. Celestial Dragon Crossbows is an interesting one, especially because, like, in this build, you might think they're just regular crossbows if you don't actually check the unit card, and a lot of people are going to be focused on the crane guns and other threats, right, so they can maybe even fly under the radar a little bit here is interesting certainly but let me know again your guys thoughts in the comments down below hopefully you enjoyed that if you like this sort of content be sure to like subscribe hit that bell notification every time i upload a new video you'll be notified thanks again we'll see you next time